one day Thor was minding his own business when he noticed something strange about an ominous door in the side of a mountain. This was Thor's one day off, but he reckoned he would do some sightseeing as a nice pastime. What a nice sight, I guess now it's time to go, never mind it looks like we're going inside. Thor ventured through a dark corridor and eventually came across a large chamber with a woman standing by a fire. So Thor reckoned he'd best check what she was up to. That's close enough. Who are you? I'm Fat Thor. Who are you? What do you mean? Didn't you get my letter? I paid good coin to a courier to track you down and you're saying you just came here by coincidence? Well, Thor isn't exactly the easiest to track. Well, perhaps it's fate. The thing is, my younger brother went down this shaft a few days ago and I'm worried he's stuck down there. Or worse. I know this is a lot to ask, but I need you to go in after him and bring him back to me alive. Do you think you could do that for me? Thor, remember, this is your day off. You have no obligation to do anything. I knew I could count on you. I genuinely worry if you're okay. Now quickly, go. Well, I guess this is what we're doing today then. Approaching a giant drop, Thor then found a dusty journal on a pedestal, which read, If you are reading this, you stand at the entrance to an ancient dwarven city. No doubt you have never heard of it, for in all my travels and all my study, I have never read of it in any text, save for the inscription here. It reads, Those who seek refuge will find peace here, basking in the sun under the ground. Those who seek gold will find riches beyond imagining, but will pay for this folly with their lives, for there is no return to the world of man. Is it possible there is life down there? Is it possible the dwarves are still alive after all this time? As I stand here on this precipice, war raging all over Tamriel, my mind is made up. Today, I take a leap of faith. Beloved reader, perhaps one day you will join me. Consider this an invitation or a warning. Let's be honest, I think we all know that Thor definitely took that as an invitation. But he wasn't a huge fan of falling to his death, so he decided to get a little more information off Cassia first. Look, are you ready to go or not? Bitch, we can turn around and leave right now unless you answer my f***ing question. Alright. Why did you send for me of all people? I was in Markarth looking for help when I heard people talking about you. Shit, boys, they figured me out. Going to find your brother, speak to you later. Oh my god, that was a close one. Am I right, Thor? Thor continued on and came across a ginormous cavern with what seemed to be an old abandoned Dwemer city inside. He also noticed a hanging body and a note beside it. Thor reckoned this had to be Cassia's brother and the note read as follows. To whoever reads this, I am so sorry you had to find me like this. And worse, that you will share my fate. I have spent a lifetime in this place going around and around in circles, searching for a way out. But there are only two choices. Death, or the door to the house on the lake. I made the mistake of opening that door. I thought I could help them if I found the right one, but whatever I did, it took me right back to that lake house. In the end, all I learned is that some things are worse than death. I urge you to learn from my mistakes. Best to take your own life now, than find out what awaits you beyond that door. I've locked it and hidden the key. I'll guard it with my eternal soul if I have to. But I fear... Even that will not be enough. For the lake house calls to you. And when it does, you must not listen. Aldrius. But unfortunately, the lake house did call and Thor did listen. But first, he needed to find the key from Aldrius' ghost. I was in your
Ortrius's demon ghost voice was right. We need that key because wherever the lake house led was bound to be better than starving to death. Stay away. I hid that key for a reason. Yeah, but we need it, so... Mission successful. I guess we'll just walk back. Ouch, my knees. Thor reckoned it was time to find out what this creepy lake house was all about. So he took a look over the narrow wooden bridge and saw that the lake house door had some sort of magical effect. But Thor ain't been scared for a single day in his life, so headed across the bridge and unlocked the door with the key he just almost broke his knees trying to obtain. Inside was a small room which contained a desk which contained a note. It read, Seven years ago, I discovered this wondrous city uninhabited. Others soon followed, eating my invitation, and our community grew and prospered under my rule. But as I write this, I am alone once again, for my subjects have been the victims of an unspeakable atrocity. This is why, at the expense of my own life, I must open a portal that will take you into the past, before all this began. Beloved reader, you must go back, investigate what set this atrocity in motion, and prevent it by any means necessary. Thor didn't really fancy himself a time traveller, but he figured he had no other choice. And so Thor touched the portal one last time, and finally travelled to the Forgotten City. Where did you come from? I just arrived. Strange. It looks like you just came out of the Jarl's private lake house. Um, I got lost? Yeah, well, just make sure you don't get lost in anyone else's home. Live by our laws here, and we'll all get along just fine. Your laws? Don't hurt anyone, don't steal anything. Same as anywhere else. Only the punishment here is much, much worse. The Jarl can tell you more and help you get settled in. Might even have some quarters for you. I can take you to him if you like. Thor reckoned that sounding like a good plan, so followed Gulvar up to the Citadel to speak to the Jarl who was the whole reason Thor was there in the first place. This is the Citadel, where the Jarl and his guests live. If you manage to worm your way in with them, you might get to live here too. I probably wouldn't tempt Thor with any sort of privilege if I were you. Gulva, what do you think you're doing? You're meant to be working the Owl's farm, not trudging dirt into his citadel. Jormund, take it easy, would you? I was just showing our new friend here to the Jarl. Well, how about you get back to work, and I take our new friend the rest of the way? If you don't work, none of us eat, Gulva. Remember that. How could I forget? Fine, I'll get back to work. It was nice meeting you, my friend. Stop by for a chat any time you like. I'm sorry about that. That probably sounded a bit harsh, but it's my job to make sure we all have enough to eat. I'm Jormund. Let's head up to the next floor then, shall we? Stay close behind me. Wouldn't want you getting lost now, would we? Thor followed Jormund up to the top floor of the citadel where the Jarl's quarters were located. However, Thor had never went this long, acting this normal in his life, and was progressively dying on the inside. Alright, so we're about to meet Jarl Metellus. There's a couple of things you should know about him, if you want to make a good impression. First, he was the first one here. Well, he was here before the rest of us anyway. So the citadel is his, and where are all his guests? Second, he's very protective of this place, and won't tolerate anyone disturbing the peace. So be on your best behaviour, and you should be fine. Although Thor's best behaviour was little better than a petulant child's. 
All right, you're on your own from here. I've got lazy farmers to supervise. Good luck with the Jarl, and I'll see you around. Thor began to walk to the terrace where the Jarl was located, but before he did that, he wanted to have a quick look around the Jarl's chambers. Among the multiple useless scraps of junk and items, Thor found a citizen's arrival log, which had already contained an entry for himself, which he thought was strange. Thor concluded that the word must just travel fast around this place, so thought nothing more of it, and continued on to the balcony. There's a face I don't recognise. On second thought, Thor concluded the Jarl was just a flat-out liar. Welcome to my city. I'm Jarl Metellus. Tell me, what is your name? Thor told him his name, knowing full well he already knew who he was. It's always exciting to meet a new member of our small community. Now, before I forget, since you're here for good, you'll need some quarters. Here's a key to the last vacant chambers down in the city, between Brawl and Luki. It's all yours. Now tell me, what brings you to my city? Something suspicious was definitely going on, but Thor reckoned he would play along for now and told Yolma Tellus that he himself sent him back in time. I sent you here. I... I'm not sure what you mean. Here is the letter you will write shortly after the city is destroyed. Well, let's see. This is my handwriting. The victims of an unspeakable atrocity. I will open a portal that will take you into the past. You must go back. This... this is real, isn't it? I've even toyed with the idea of creating a portal between two points in time, with Brawl's help. But that's odd. My letter makes no mention of what caused the disaster. I suppose I was in a hurry. So tell me, what's going to happen to us? I don't know, but it was dark and there were burnt corpses everywhere. That's exactly what I saw when I first discovered this place, several years ago. It seems whatever happened then is going to happen again. I think it has something to do with the Dwarves law. This is bad. This is very, very bad. What is the Dwarves law? You see, the Dwarves who built this place left inscriptions. Brawl hasn't been able to fully translate them, but we understand some parts. This warning keeps coming up. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. We think that breaking the law here will cause some kind of event. The truth is, I've used the Dwarves' law to frighten my people into obedience. And it's worked so far. But someone's about to break that law. Let me think. Hmm. Your arrival here is exactly what I need. You've helped me a great deal by bringing this note to my attention. I wonder if you could do me another favor. If you're about to say investigate the city, then we're one step ahead. Investigate the city? Yes, that's what I just said. Talk to my people. Help them, if it'll win their trust. You can even go through their possessions, if you have to. You must work out who is going to break the Dwarves' law. Once you have a name, come back and tell me immediately. As Jarl, I authorize you to go anywhere you need to go, including private homes. But if someone asks you to leave, you should do so immediately. <sighs> now what do you say? Will you help me? Fine. Thank you. Now. You mustn't tell anybody where you're from, or what may be about to happen here. People do foolish things when they panic. If it helps you, you're welcome to borrow the book on my desk. It contains the names and addresses of my subjects. Just don't show it to anyone. Shit. Goodbye for now, and good luck. I don't need to tell you what will happen if you fail. Once again, Thor was tasked with saving everybody's life. But he had no idea where to start. Any one of the citizens could be the culprit, and it was up to Thor to find out who it was. But something told Thor the Yarl wasn't letting off everything he knew, and he continued to pester Thor even before he had left. Hello again, my friend. Any word about the matter we discussed? No, I literally haven't moved since you last told me to get on it. Hello again, my friend. Ouch, my knees. <laughs> 
There's a looter coming into the city. And this is my problem. Why? I saw a man come down the shaft, but he was armed and he looked like a looter. If he makes it into the city and starts attacking people, he'll break the dwarves' law. And who knows what will happen? You have to stop him. For fuck's sake, why have I got to do everything around here? Thor showed the looters some sympathy by ending their life. Killing you was simplistic. But more simptivities came piling down the tunnel. Unfortunately, Thor about to show you the symptoms of getting smacked in the face by a big fucking hammer. Killing you is like conducting a symphony. You're simply simpletons with the simplest of simplisms. Ah, simps above. And just like that, Thor defended the city from the looters. But something was wrong. Thor began to have a blinding headache. The many shall suffer the sins of the one. Something had come over him. He envisioned himself wearing the shiny metal dwarven armor that he reckoned he knew where he'd seen it before. What do you want? Thor, I think this is a bad idea. What about it? Wait, Thor, you're not yourself. Something strange is happening. Not going to happen, maggot. Because you know, and I know, that the first blow that gets landed is going to get us all killed. You're not that stupid. No, you idiot. Thor is that stupid. <laughs> what have you done, you idiot? Was that really worth it? Shiny piece of armor in exchange for an entire city's living population? What are you going to do now? Try and save them? Look at that thing. It's like three times the size of you. And what's that little hammer going to do to it? Just back up. Get out of there. Oh, fuck. See what you've gotten yourself into? You know what? Let's just stop you right there. Yeah. Thor was fucked. But he did bring that on himself. As the dwarven centurions closed in around him and the city burned to the ground, Thor reckoned he'd probably made a mistake. But thankfully, Thor had one thing left going for him. And that's me. So I plugged in my controller and went manual on this bitch, because Thor was clearly unable to get out of this situation himself. But the Centurions weren't having none of it. They were still mad at Thor for imposing the Dwarf's Law. Thor took back control and ran down the pier back to the Jarl's lake house. He reckoned if he hid back there then the Centurions would leave him alone. Please don't kill me, please. Looks like others had the same idea too. And as Thor stood atop the riverbank hiding behind the lake house, the Centurions closed in, searching for any remaining life. They had slaughtered every other thing in the city and it was all because of Thor. What a f***ing moron. The Centurion looked around for any sign of movement but couldn't see anything which was a good thing for Thor, who was currently hiding behind a stone building with his hammer knowing full well it weren't going to do f*** all. But the Centurion laid its sights on something else. Some of the citizens as a last resort hid in the water which meant they were about to become a human stew pot. And thanks to Thor and his strange bird-like addiction to shiny things, the Dwarves law destroyed the entire city. I think they're gone. Maybe try and get inside the lake house and open that portal. With any luck, the Yarl would have run down from the citadel and made it here before- Oh, never mind, there he is, doing some freaky shit. You must stop this from happening. Ah, shit. Here we go again. In the words of Geralt of Rivia, I hate portals. Right, let's try and not kill everyone this time. You there, where did you come from? Honestly, I can't be asked to speak to you again. So Thor started heading up to the citadel to talk to the young- Wait, where are you going? You missed the stairs? This isn't the right way you know- Oh, I see, he's going to the shiny armor guy to rub it in his face. Wait, are you wearing... Strange. You're wearing the same armor as me. I mean, it's exactly the same. Thor just stared him in the eye for a short moment to assert dominance. Bye. Dominance asserted. Now let's go and see if that Brong is around so we can figure out what to do next. Hello, I'm looking for Brong. Oh, hello there. Yes, as I said, do you know where Brong is? I heard he was around here somewhere. Oh, here. there he is. Out of the way, Some lady, please. I need to speak to the life. Dunma. Ah, newcomer. You should head on up to the citadel. Make yourself known to the Yes, but what can you tell me about the dwarves' law? Well, the dwarves who built this city left inscriptions in the citadel, which translate to The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Ah, oh, frack. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Until we know more, 
We all need to be on our best behavior. Ouch, my head. Also, look at my armor. Ah, yes. Most dwarven armor you see these days is quite badly worn. But this piece is still perfect, after thousands of years. It also seems to have some magical properties. It should protect you from the harmful energy down in the tunnels below the city. It all but killed Brandis when he went down there. But he didn't have a full set. If you can get down there safely, let me know what you discover. Sounds good. Catch you later. Very well. Come back if you think of any questions about something you discover. Yeah, yeah, sure. Maybe we should ask around the town a bit and try to figure out who the culprit is. Welcome. Now, I trust you've had your time of the yard. <sighs> For fuck's sake, fine. This whole time paradox is a pain in the arse. Thor began to head back up to the top floor of the citadel. Oh, I remember the first time I met the Jarl. Yeah, so do I. Thor then came across a strange looking metal gate which seemed very suspicious, and after staring at it for almost 30 minutes, Thor decided there was probably no way in there and he had probably wasted his time. Boopy doopy doopy oh. Uh, oh. That's probably nothing. Let's just go speak to the Jarl. Wait, why have you stopped? Of course you stole the Jarl's clothes before going into the portal. And what exactly do you mean to achieve with this? What are you doing? Just staring at each other. Like, is there a point to this? Getting a little uncomfortable now, Thor, I'm not going to lie. Hello again. Back so soon. I think this was another dominance thing. Ouch, my knees. We can talk, but be quick. Donna is Fuck you say to me, you little shit! Hey you, we want a word with you. Tell us your story. Well, it's a sad one. But I don't mind telling it. Name's Golvar. I'm a farmer. Always was. Grew up on a farm near White Run. It was a good life. Yeah, yeah, skip to the fucking point. I took my father's axe and pulled the door open real quick. Before he knew it, that bandit had my father's axe right down the middle of his skull. Oh, so you're a murderer. Please do continue. I started taking things. Thief as well? Okay, carry on. I watched myself break into some guy's farmhouse. Breaking and entering, yep. That bloody yard. But he'll get his. One day. And strong hostility towards one of the city's residents. Okay, I'll be on my way. Fair enough. See you around. Yeah, he's definitely the culprit. Confirming eyes on the target. Thor is in position. The plan is go ahead as long as the city sleeps tonight. Okay, Thor, it's time to move in. I hope you remember the plan. We drop down and enter the inn like any normal knight. The subject will appear suspicious. He might even sense the forthcoming danger, but as soon as he returns to his home, we follow him out, posing as a drunken fool. There's no room for failure. We must be- Well, that wasn't part of the plan in the slightest. Now you went and destroyed the entire city again. Are you proud of yourself? Great. Just great. Okay, so clearly Gulvar wasn't the culprit. Or if he was, then we can't just kill him right in the open. What do you mean, can't we just kill everybody? Then what's the point of trying to save them in the first place? Wait, wait, shh. I think someone's coming. Okay, the coast is clear. So where were we? Oh yeah, murder everybody. Terrible plan. We're not doing it. No way. Hello.
Oh, so your plan didn't work. The dwarves law triggered every time? Oh, who would have thought? Maybe just possibly we should try my plan for once. I'm taking that as a yes. There's something strange going on with that mine. A powerful radiation emitting from the tunnels. No one has ever managed to get down there without burning alive. But Brawl says with the full set of immaculate dwarven armor, you might just survive the passage. What do you mean you don't need no armor? That's the stupidest thing I've ever- <laughs> Told ya. You are stupid, you know that right. Now I've got to drag your lifeless body out of this fucking tunnel. Don't ask. Excuse me, coming through. Just need to get Thor to the portal. In honesty, I preferred you this way, but as long as you're stuck here, I'm stuck here. So try not get yourself killed, yeah? Oh, now we agree on finding the armor. Yeah? That's what I thought. Ouch, my knees. Oh, hello. Hello, what's your story then? My what? My, my story? Oh, do you want to hear about me? I'm sorry, but my memory's not very good. I only remember some things. I, um, I came here with my brother, Harrible. He used to look after me. And he said he always would, but then he died. Now nobody looks after me. I, I'm not very good at remembering things. Sometimes I forget, so I need help. That's why I need some help finding Harrible's treasure. Please don't steal this poor man's dead brother's treasure, Thor. Oh, help. Harabel said I should only tell someone I trust. Only someone I know. Not you. I don't know you yet. Do I? Mm, uh, I know what you're no. thinking, Thor, N but no. <laughs> Something tells me we're not on the same page here. Just a feeling. Hmm. You took longer than usual. Weird. Okay, this time, Thor, you actually have no reason to kill anybody else, so if we could keep our hands to ourselves, that would be nice. You must stop this from happening. Yeah, yeah, heard it all before. Thor desperately wanted to find that treasure, so headed on into the sunken house at the bottom of the lake which led to a large underwater ravine that most men would drown swimming through. But Thor, for some reason, still thought he was immortal, so just swam through it without even taking a breath. And to be honest, I'm actually quite surprised by his respiratory capacity. It was probably all from that one time where I made him swim through the entire sea of ghosts for about 10 minutes and 1 second without coming up for air. Wow, fair play. You're still not immortal, but credit where credit's due. Stop right there. What is this one doing here? This is Fat Thor, and we're looking for a treasure chest. Ah, the locked chest. Yes, we have it, but have been unable to open it. Why don't you come in and join us for dinner? Now, I know you're hungry, Thor, but let's be honest, they're quite clearly cannibal. Very good. Follow me. Dinner comes to us. So did Thor, and now you're dead. What's that? A key to the locked gate in the citadel? And a note. Dear Dooley, if you're reading this, blah blah blah, Yalma Tellus cannot be trusted. Confront him about what he's been doing behind that locked door in the citadel. Well, I think it's about time we paid our little Yal friend a visit and see what he's hiding then. Thor felt a chilling and sinister vibe emitting from behind the large bronze gate. Something told him that whatever it was, he wasn't going to like it. 
Inside was a short corridor leading to another door, which when opened, revealed something that even Thor's messed up conscience would never even consider. The Jarl had a woman chained to the wall and stripped of her clothes. Oh gods, not again. Please don't hurt me. For once, Thor actually felt sorry for somebody. Thank the gods. Quickly, you have to let me down before that monster comes back. But something was strange. Surely this went against the dwarves law. Of course it is. But I think the dwarves are blind to whatever happens in this room. You can see the dwarven bust over there got broken somehow. Strange, but if we let you go, what will you do? I'm going to kill that monster who calls himself Jarl. I'll scratch out his eyes with my bare hands if I have to. Ah, well the problem with that is that's going to get everyone killed. So you're just gonna leave me here? Well, first we're going to confront Yarmatellus and see what he has to say about his crimes. The Jarl's waiting for you on his balcony, on your left. Yes, I'm sure he is. Hello again, my friend. Any word about the matter we discussed? I know who's going to destroy the city. Well, I hope your investigation has been thorough. I don't want you accusing the first person you suspect. So, who is it? It was you all along. I know what's been going on in your locked room, old man. Hey, keep your voice down. You want to get us all killed? Look. You might have noticed we're being watched by the dwarven statues everywhere you look. But I managed to break the bust in that room. So in there, there is no dwarves law. Understand? What happens in my private room stays there. Because if my little secret gets out, then you and everyone else in this place is going to suffer badly. What you do next is up to you. You can keep your mouth shut, in which case we all live. Or you can let her go, in which case we all die. You slimy little cut. Ah, I see you have not yet discovered your true nature. It seems I know you better than you know yourself. You have come from the future. And why is that? Is your desire for power so great that you would break even the laws of time for it? Dovahkiin. Sorry, what did you say? I was just, um, daydreaming. I saw a man come down the shaft, but he was armed and he looked like a looter. If he makes it into the city and starts attacking people, he'll break the dwarves' law. And who knows what will happen? You have to stop him! Jesus oh, Christ, I'm this again? Thor, do us a favor and mess him up, would you? Now that's taken care of, let's end this once and for all. Thor figured he had no other choice. Freeing Maisie would get everyone killed, so he hoped that whatever was in the mine would provide another option. The pressure from the radiation became more immense the further down the mine he went, and at the lowermost precipice lay a broken bronze door angled 45 degrees into the ground. A powerful force overcame Thor as waves of judgement burst through the doorway ahead of him, all coming from this strange blue orb with a dark figure residing within. Ah, and here you are. I've been waiting for you, Dovahkiin. Ah yeah, that reminds me. I was supposed to tell you, but I kept getting distracted, which is mostly your fault because you can't go one full day without some sort of get to the point. Thor, basically you're a dragonborn. Ah, I see you have not yet discovered your true nature. It seems I know you better than you know yourself. Should I have told you? Yes, probably. But also, wait, this guy knows you. Of course. To me, your memories 
are an open tome. To begin with, I know you have trespassed countless times against others of your kind. I wouldn't really call it trespassing. I mean, there was that one time in Cyrodiil, but other than that, I'll have you know that Thor is an outstanding member of society. Liar. Fuck, he's good. Maybe he does know you after all. And I know you have looted the corpses of those you have slain. If you refer to that one time in High Rock, then Thor was actually returning something to the corpse, not taking it. Liar. Oh wait, he's right. You did actually steal the man's glasses. I know you have slaughtered countless beasts of the wild in their natural habitats. Whoa, steady there. I wouldn't speak about Thor's ex-wives like that. I'll have you know Thor broke up with them. Liar. I also know you have come from the future. And why is that? Is your desire for power so great that you would break even the laws of time for it? It makes no difference. You will not take it from me. You would not be so foolish as to break my law. You mean the Dwarves' Law, which we have broken more times than Thor's had wives? I mean my law. I made it because your kind would be incapable of order, of peace, without it. But wait. If you made the Dwarves Law, then that would make you... That makes me the Arbiter. I am also the Founder. I discovered this site millennia ago. And for my patience, it seems my reward is a visit from you, Dovahkiin. Well, why have you travelled through time to come here? What is it you seek? Well, it turns out you don't see everything. That creep, Metellus, has been breaking your law right under your nose. Speak plainly. What crimes has this self-proclaimed Jarl committed? Go on, look into my memories once again. Now you see it. The girl locked in the citadel. I see you believe what you are saying. It seems my misgivings about your kind were justified. He and his subjects must all be purged. Now, while I commend your honesty, I am afraid you too must be punished, for my law must be upheld. Goodbye, Dover King. But you forgot one very important thing. Thor is a fucking <laughs> sick! Hmm, I never thought I'd see the day where your bipolar outburst would actually come in use, but here we are. Let's go, we need to get back to the lake house. No, we're not talking about the dragonborn thing. As you can see, the city is on fire at the moment. What do you mean, does that mean you can lay eggs? No, that's not how it works. At least, I think. Just get back to the lake house and we'll talk about it once this is all over. And also, do us a favour and hit Metellus harder this time. Oh, that felt very satisfying this time. Okay, one last shot. We messed this up and we're stuck here. You know the plan, right? We go back into the mine and face that- You there? Where did you come from? Gulvar, take the five best men you have and go make sure the Yol doesn't leave his quarters. Hopefully by the time this is all over, Metellus' crimes won't go unpunished. But that counts on us executing the plan correctly. For the first time in history, Thor stepped up to the plate. He knew that his actions would mean the difference between the people of this city surviving or indefinitely burning alive. You're sure you're ready for this, Thor? I can't promise what will happen when it's all over. But Thor knew the weight of his actions. He knew that he had no other choice than to put the simp side behind him. Because he was the Dragonborn. And the Dragonborn has come. Ah, uh, and here you are. I've been waiting for you, Dovahkiin. What's this? I see there is a helmet in your possession. Now, Thor! It's your helmet. Look in its eyes. We demand you put an end to your war and free the people of the city. You kill me. That is not possible. And yet, I see you speak the truth. You have come unstuck from your own time. 
Your presence here is unnatural. I will stop, but I warn you, Dovahkiin. Making these changes will create a paradox in time. The events that brought you here will never have taken place. What will become of you is difficult to predict, but that is the risk you have taken by interfering with the past. Now, are you ready? Oh, we're ready. As ready as we've ever been. Goodbye, Dovahkiin. Hold on to your glasses, Thor. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Hey, you're... No, that can't be right. For a moment there, I thought you were... You know, the one the statue was meant to honor. Wait, you're... You're Ultrius. Your sister asked us to find you. Cassia! Oh, I completely forgot. I asked her to wait for me at the top of the lift and... I guess I got so tied up in this place that I lost track of time. I'd better head back up and let her know I'm alright. Hey, um... Do you want to come with me? We can chat along the way. Sure, lead the way. Great. Follow me. The history of this place is amazing. Did you know that up until about seven years ago, they had what they called the Dwarves' Law? Apparently there were inscriptions warning that if one person committed a crime, everyone else would pay for it. But they were all trapped in the city with no way out, so they lived in fear that someone would break the law and get them all killed. Then, one day, a strange man appeared in the city out of nowhere. They say he just walked out of the lake house, like he owned the place. And he wore this spectacular dwarven armor. And a few people saw him walk into this quarry, into a field of deadly radiation, like it was nothing, like it hadn't killed people before him. And then the ground started shaking, and golden statues were collapsing, and inscriptions were crumbling all over the city, all at the same time. And the sun under the ground, which used to light up the entire cavern, bursts into flame and explodes. Strangest of all, the cavern roof opens up like the petals of a flower, and there's real sunlight for the first time in thousands of years. So of course, people start wondering, did he just walk down here and single-handedly dismantle whatever was keeping the dwarves' law going? Who was he? Was he still alive? So Bro, the local scholar, goes down into the quarry to take a look. But now the whole place is empty, but all the way at the bottom, Sitting alone in the darkness is a statue of a stranger. 